Hello, welcome to class. My name is Flo. Today I'm guiding you through a vinyasa flow practice, very simple today with more focus on backbends. If you have been around for a little bit, then sometimes in our classes it gets quite complex and we're kind of all over the place with new and funky movements. Not today, today I'm keeping it very simple. This is why this class is good for beginners, or I would say if you are a beginner with some experience, since it's not a pure beginner class. It's also great for athletes and for those that are working out a lot and you just want to do an active rest day. I will guide you through the flow and movement part of the practice and towards the end we will do some breath work and also close with a short meditation. Before we begin, two quick announcements. The first one is if you like long practices and you're missing the long classes here on YouTube, then you can check out our Patreon. Just check in the description below where we have long classes available for you with 60 minutes, 75, 90 minutes or even longer classes. Join the exclusive community there. There you will find content that's not available anywhere else, but only on Patreon. And the second announcement is that this is our own design, our own collection of the shorts. You can also check in the description below. They are great for yoga, they're great for martial arts or for really any other activity like surfing, gym, hiking, climbing, whatever you're doing, whatever brings you joy. You can wear these shorts and look really stylish and also be very functional and support us so we can keep the channel and all the content going. That's it already. All you need for this practice is a pillow towards the end for the meditation and the pranayama. But besides that, nothing is needed besides your mat. We will start in a comfortable seated position. You can sit on the heels. You can also sit cross-legged. Place your hands wherever it's comfortable and close your eyes. Connect to the surface, the ground you're sitting on. Connect to the feet, the knees, the ankles. Ground down through it. And from there you rise up through the spine. Sit a bit taller so you can fill the whole body with the good breath with every inhale and the exhale. Connect to your breath and establish a breath that works well for you. I always recommend Ujjayi for our movement practice, for our yoga practice and even off the mat as you go through the day. You want to set up a breath that you can maintain throughout the whole class, no matter how challenging or how gentle the poses, the movements will be. Use the next several breaths to set an intention for your practice today. What is it that you're working on beyond the physical, beyond the asana? What does your heart desire in this moment and for this practice? And with this breath and with this intention, we start to move and we start our practice. Let's come onto all fours into a tabletop. Little wrist warm up. Stay on the toes, straighten the arms, lean back into the heels, into the feet. Slide the hands a bit closer towards the knees and with your arms straight, lean forward. And lean back several times, forward and back. So we can awaken and activate the wrists. Now internally rotate your hands, keep going, leaning forward and back. And externally rotate the hands just three or four more times.
Now the fingertips are pointing towards the knees. Slide the hands now more forward and lean back into the feet, into the toes. Breathe into the forearms, the fingers, the hands. Connect to the toes and the feet. Sit on the heels, shake out the hands. Let's come into a tabletop again. Now untuck the toes. A few rounds of cat cow on your inhale, lower the belly, arch the back, look forward. Exhale, round the back for cat pose. Push the ground away. Inhale to cow. Exhale to cat. One more. Return to tabletop. Reach your right arm forward, the left leg back for spine balancing. Activating the back functional line. Draw the navel in. Keep reaching with the right arm forward, with the left leg back. On the exhale, release down and switch sides. Exhale, release, extend the legs back for plank pose. Firm into the inner hands, arms straight, push the ground away. You can always set the knees down if something gets too challenging. I invite you to modify it to your needs, whatever your body needs today. Shift forward, come high onto the toes. Keep the arms straight. Lean back to plank and move the hips up and back to downward facing dog. The first downward facing dog of our practice. So move around, arrive. You can bend and straighten one knee, then the other. Rotate the heels to one side if you wish. Send the hips up and back. Other side. Return back to downward dog. From downward dog, we roll forward to a plank. And if you now have to adjust the feet or the hands, then it's an indicator that your downward dog is maybe too short or maybe too long. So you want to be able to move from a plank, the hips up and back, and that's your downward facing dog. So we're going to do that movement two more times. From down dog, we roll through the spine forward to plank. Keep the arms straight the whole time. Back to down dog. One more to plank. From plank, shift forward, come high onto the toes. Bend the arms, lower all the way down to the ground. For Sphinx pose, come onto the forearms, untuck the toes. I recommend bringing the feet wide apart, as wide as you mat. Open the front body. If you want to go deeper, engage the glutes more, straighten the arms for seal. Focus on lengthening the spine, opening the front instead of closing the back, especially as we move more into deeper back bends today as the class progresses. On the exhale, we release all the way down to the ground, wherever you are. Hands next to the rib cage. Come onto the toes. Lift the knees. 
lift the hips, straighten your arms, plank to downward dog. From down dog, let's step or float the feet forward between the hands. We meet in a forward fold. Let the upper body hang heavy. You can grab opposite elbows. Bend one knee, then the other. So I invite you to move in a way that feels good for you. All of the things here in this practice are just suggestions. If your body is calling for something else, if you want to add something else because it makes you feel good, then go ahead and do that. I don't want to train soldiers on the mat that do exactly what I'm saying here, especially in the live classes in person. So I invite you to explore and connect to your own practice and to your own body. Because this is in the end what the practice is all about, the connection to yourself. Now with the legs straight, we release the hands down and then keep those legs straight as we roll up through the spine to standing from the base of the spine, slowly we roll up. Imagine vertebrae by vertebrae moving up nice and slow. It takes several breaths to get all the way to standing. And once you stand, we again roll down. Internally rotate the arms, chin to the chest. Now from top to bottom, we roll down. Several breaths to get down. We will eventually all meet in a forward fold. From there, we take a deep breath in, lift up halfway. Exhale, fold. Two more, inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, fold. Last one, lift up halfway. On the exhale, step the left foot back for low lunge. Set the left knee down, untuck the left toes. Inhale, reach the arms up. Send the hips forward and down. Arms are straight, reaching up. Last deep breath in, exhale, hands down, half splits, straighten the right leg, heel toe the right foot forward. This depends on your proportions, flex the right foot, deep breath in to lengthen through the spine, exhale to fold. You can rotate the foot to the right, then fold down, see how it feels. Rotate to the left, do the same. Simply notice. Rebend the right knee. We're coming into a runner's lunge. The left knee lifts up. Now bring both hands inside the right foot, heel toe the right foot to the right for lizard lunge. Both palms down or stay on the fingertips, lower the hips, keep the left leg straight. Move the hips around, move the body around if you need to. Connect to the sensation in the body, send your breath there. Because through this practice we create so much space in the body and we want to um, fill the space with something. So we want to fill it with presence, with love, with peace. So we can create more space within the body for all of these qualities for the passenger inside this beautiful body that you have. Let's release the left knee down, bend the left leg, we'll go for a thigh stretch, reach the right arm back, hold on to the right foot, grab the pinky toe side, extend the leg away from you first, and then relax the left quad, pull the foot towards you. Use a strap here if you cannot reach the foot or just stay in lizard lunge. Slowly release, back to lizard lunge. Now we step the left knee outside the right foot. We're coming for a seated twist. Set the hips down. 
two options here. You can hug the right leg into the chest or you come into the full seated twist by hooking the forearm or the upper arm outside the thigh. Wherever you are, deep breath in through the spine to lengthen up. Exhale, rotate to the right. Repeat that pattern a couple more times. And if one hip wants to lift up, allow it to lift up. We do not want to force both hips down to the ground. Because that might make your sacrum, the base of the spine, a little bit angry. And we don't want that. Inhale brings you back to face the front. And we will return to a lizard lunge. Create a good foundation with your left hand. Lift your right hand up off the ground already. And from here, we transition into a side plank on the left. Stack the right foot on top. Right arm is reaching up. Good, strong foundation with your left hand, firming into the thumb side of your left hand. Lift your left hip slightly higher up. Rotate the right hip forward just a bit. Reach your right arm up and over the head. Breathe into the right side body. Plank pose, both hands down, both feet down. From here we shift forward. Bend the arms, Chaturanga. Plank, straighten the arms. One more time, shift forward, Chaturanga. Elbows in, plank, downward facing dog. Bring the feet a bit wider apart. We now roll forward through plank pose into upward facing dog, but we stay on the toes as they are right now. Lower the hips, engage the glutes, open the front body. Broaden the collarbones, look straight ahead. Chin to the chest, back to downward dog. One more like that, rolling forward and through. Through plank to upward dog. From here, shift forward, bend the arms, chaturanga, plank. You can always set the knees down. Shift forward one more time, lower all the way down. Sphinx pose again, come onto the forearms. Bring the feet wider apart. So don't tell me that this was very hard because you can set the knees down. You can make it a little bit easier for you. But we want, of course, a little bit activation there in the full body, the core, deep core, the arm lines. But if you're not feeling it today, set those knees down, take those breaks. If you feel like going deeper now, of course, optional, you can straighten the arms, seal pose. Wherever you are, stay with the breath. Nice and slow. Stay with Ujjayi. On your next exhale, lower all the way down to the ground. Shake out the hips up for a moment. We slide the hands back next to the rib cage and we come onto the toes to press up to plank. And downward facing dog, send the hips back. Let's bring the feet together and then you decide, step or float the feet forward between the hands. Take a deep breath in to lift up halfway. Exhale to fold. With the legs straight, one more time we roll up from the base of the spine up through the vertebrae. Segmenting all the areas, lumbar, thoracic, and cervical. Once you're standing, 
we reverse it. Internally rotate the hands, chin to the chest, roll from top to bottom down. Take several breaths to do that. We meet in a forward fold. Deep breath in, lift up halfway, lengthen. Exhale, step the right foot back, low lunge. Untuck the right toes, inhale, reach the arms up. One more deep breath in. Exhale, half splits, hands down, straighten your left leg. Deep breath in to lengthen. Exhale to melt. Keep the left foot dorsiflex so that the toes are reaching towards your head. Explore by rotating the foot to the left, fold down to the right, fold down, back to center. And let's rebend the left knee, return to runner's lunge. Both hands come inside the left foot, heel toe the left foot to the left for lizard lunge. Move the hips around. That could be forward and back, could be circles, could be bouncing up and down. What is your body calling for? What do you need in this moment? And it's different every day. That's the beauty of this practice. Every day your body might need a little bit different things. And it's great that the practice can provide for everybody. Let's set the right knee down, bend the right leg, thigh stretch. Grab the pinky toe side if you can, extend the foot or extend the leg into the hand first and then pull the foot towards your hips. Try to lengthen from above the knee, up the thigh, through the right hip, up the upper body with deep breaths. Exhale to release, back to lizard lunge. We bring the right knee outside the left foot for a seated twist. Remember those two options. Option one, hug the left knee in or hook the right arm outside the thigh. Deep breath in to lengthen through the spine. Exhale to rotate to the left. Repeat that pattern with the breath, with the movement. Connecting breath to movement, that's what vinyasa flow is. Vinyasa flow yoga. Inhale brings you back to face the front of the mat and we come back to a lizard lunge. Good foundation with the right hand, especially firm into the thumb side of your hand. We come into a side plank. Right arm is straight, pushing into the ground. Lift your right hip a bit higher up. Start to reach the left arm up and over the head, reaching forward, creating even more length on the left side upper body. Fill that space with the breath. On the exhale, plank pose, both hands down, both feet down. Shift forward, bend the arms, chaturanga. Hold for three, two, one. Plank pose, straighten the arms. Downward facing dog. Let's release the elbows down for dolphin pose. You can walk the feet a bit more forward. You can also bend the legs if you need to. Press into the elbows, into the forearms to move the chest more towards the legs towards the thighs. 
Close your eyes if you want to. We're here for a bit longer. So we can enter our meditation while we are in this shape. Because it doesn't matter what shape we're in, the breath is always there so that there's always the opportunity to meditate and to find more peace and joy within, in the silence through the breath. Try to straighten both arms at the same time to return back to downward dog. Bring your feet a bit wider apart. Roll through the spine forward, through plank, into upward facing dog. We're staying on those toes as they are right now. Shift forward, bend the arms, chaturanga. Plank. And lower all the way down. Readjust on your mat, so I will slide back a little bit. We keep the feet on the ground, interlace your hands behind the back, untuck the toes. On your inhale, engage the back body, lift the chest, lift the shoulders up, reach the hands towards the heels, and lower down. Lift, five, lower, four, three, two, and one. We're gonna hold for five, four, three, reach the hands more towards the heels, two, one, and release. Bend the knees, hold on to either the shins, the ankles, or if you can, the tops of your feet. Start to engage the back body and straighten the legs to lift the knees, the thighs, the chest, the shoulders for floor bow. A lot of engagement in the glutes, in the back body. We're holding for five, four, three, two, and one. Release down. Hands next to the rib cage, feet down, tops of the feet down, shake out the hips. If you want, we'll come now into an upward facing dog, the regular traditional upward facing dog that we usually do. Otherwise, you can come to a child's pose, send the hips back or do whatever you want. Do whatever the body is calling for not what the mind thinks is the right thing to do now. Let's all meet back in downward dog. Now from this downward dog, we will come to a seated position onto our back for bridge pose. Many options here to get there. Do whatever the one that is calling you. You can walk the feet forward between the hands, then sit the hips down, come onto your back. You can handstand forward, you can float, or you can also float through. Set the hips down, come onto the back. Bring the heels closer to the hips so that you can with the hands touch your back side of the heels. Press into the feet, lift the hips up. Keep a gap between the chin and the chest. If you want, you can come a bit more onto the shoulder blades or even interlace your hands behind the back. We'll stay here for several breaths. Enjoy the Pose, enjoy the breath. And then in a moment we will come down and do one more round. And for that second round you can again take bridge pose. 
or come into wheel if you feel ready for it and open. So I know my body very well. I will do wheel. I know that I feel ready for it. If you don't feel like it today, don't do it. Again, listen to the body, get out of your head. Connect to the breath. Let's lower the hips down, but keep a back bend here. So the hips touch the ground, but your lower back is still lifted off the mat. So we're still in a little back bend because back bends are progressive. So we want to keep the back bend before we come into the second round. So as I said, come up to bridge if you want or wheel pose. And for that one, I assume you know what you're doing. So I will not give any cues there. We're here for about five breaths. Wherever you are, slowly come back down. If you're in wheel, chin to the chest first, bend the arms, the head lands first, then the shoulders. So you're kind of going through a bridge pose slowly. We all come down. Once you're down, just bring the feet a little bit wider apart and the knees together so they're touching. The last thing you want to do now is to Hug the knees into the chest, so don't do that. At least not right after. Gently move the knees left and right, windshield viper. And let's bring the knees all the way over to the right, just as they are. If there's any other twist you want to do, go for it. And through center to the left. As I said, keeping it simple with the twist today. Back to center. If there's one more pose you want to do, do that now. Then we will come up to seated. And with my yogi's power, yogi powers, I will attract a pillow to me so I can sit on it and you also should get a pillow now to get ready for your meditation practice. So find a comfortable seat. Yoga works, seems to work. And place your hands wherever it's comfortable. We'll finish up with Anulom Vilom, the alternating nostril breathing, usually the first breathing exercise you learn as a student of yoga. We will use our right hand and from the right hand we will use the thumb and the ring finger. If you don't have those fingers then use any other finger that works for you. But we will stick to those and you can keep the index finger and middle finger bent. If that's uncomfortable then you can put them on your third eye between the eyebrows. We exhale all the air out, then with your thumb you close the right nostril, start to inhale through only the left side. At the top of the inhale you switch, you close the left nostril, open the right nostril, exhale through the right side. Now same side, inhale on the right. At the top you switch, close the right nostril, open the left, exhale through the left. That's one round. Let's keep going. Inhale left. Exhale through the right. Inhale right. Exhale left. Round two complete. Keep it going. Inhale left. Exhale right. Inhale right, 
Exhale, left. Inhale, left. And continue on your own. In this first version of Anulom Vilom, we don't want to control the breath too much. So you don't want to lengthen the breath. You don't want to slow it down. You don't want to do any holds. This practice exists. And we will do this in future videos. Also on Patreon, we do more advanced breathing exercises. But for this one, let's just keep the breath flowing, steady, without controlling it much. We're just redirecting the breath through the left and right side to the body to come into a more balanced state in the center. So keep breathing. Keep going with the breathing exercise. I'll join you for one last round and we will finish up as we exhale through the left nostril. Then just put the hands down, enjoy the meditation. Bring the hands into a comfortable position on the knees, the thighs, or in your lap. Sit tall. Lengthen the crown of the head upwards. Now we let go of controlling the breath and simply observe the breath, how it's flowing in and out through the nose. Just for one or two minutes. It's a super short meditation. But all the movements, all the poses in yoga are leading up so that we can sit and meditate. So I strongly, strongly encourage you to start a daily meditation practice, 10, 15 minutes at least. It's going to change your life. Let's deepen the breath, bring the hands to the heart, and thank yourself for showing up today, for putting in the work, for dedicating the time to focus on you. So we can connect to our true self within and to more peace and joy in our heart. Thank you very much for joining me today for this practice. I'll see you in the next one. With love and gratitude. Namaste.